Hello everyone! Today we're going to run a latent growth model in R using the Levant package. I'm going to first walk through a toy conceptual model, and then I'll show you what the dataset should look like. We're going to specify the model in R, and then finally interpret the output. Let's say you have longitudinal data. You measure the variable of interest over time, and you are interested in the growth trajectory of this variable. For instance, we might want to model technology use among older adults. Based on previous research, we know that older adults as a group are not as tech savvy as younger adults, but we think their tendency for using technology is growing, perhaps because the society as a whole is becoming more and more reliant on technology. And to this end, we measure technology use at four time points that are equally spaced from time one to time four. Let's say we have one participant, and this is the growth trajectory of his technology use. As time goes on, he uses technology more and more. But we are not interested in one individual. We want to know how the level of technology use evolves with time at the population level. We're trying to estimate the intercept at what level of technology use people start out with and the slope, how it changes over time. And together, we can use the intercept and the slope to summarize data and distill information. This is a graphical representation of a latent growth model, and I took the image from this website created by the creators of Levon. I'm going to give you some context about how to read this model. Let's say on the top here we have observed technology use measured at four different time points. In the middle here, we have I, which is the intercept. It is at what level of technology use people start out with. And then we also have the S, which is slope. It is how the level of technology use changes over time. On the bottom right here, we have the X variables. These are predictors that can influence the intercept and the slope. For instance, X1 may be a dummy coded variable that tells us whether an older adult has kids who live far away. If they do, they may be more inclined to use smartphones and email and Skype to stay in touch. On the right here, we have X2, which can be job requirement in our illustration. If an older adult had a job that required them to use computers, that may have influenced their baseline level of technology use and how it changes over time. On the bottom left here, we have C, the time varying covariate. It is different from the X variables because the X variables are constant over time, but C changes over time. Let's say C is a measure of one's interest towards technology. You can imagine if someone is more interested about technology, we're going to see a higher observed level of tech use up here. Next, we are going to move on to our studio. The first thing you're going to do is download the Levon packages if you haven't already. And then I'm going to call the library Levon so we can use the functions it comes with. And then I'm going to show you what the input dataset looks like. The dataset I'm using today is called demo.growth. It is when you run this line, uh, you will see this window that explains that demo.growth is a toy dataset that contains all the variables that we just covered. So I'm going to run a head demo growth. Now it shows you the, the head of the data set as opposed to all 400 observations. So as we can see, the data set has the T variable. These are observed technology use uh, measured at four different time points. We also have the two X variables that are constant over time, and then the time varying covariate. As you can see, the data is in wide format as opposed to long format. So each row represents one participant. And when you're ready, you're just going to replace this part and call your own data set. Next, we are going to specify our model. The code here is pretty elegant. We only need a few lines of code to describe our model. So on the top here, we have the run random intercept i, and then we have the random slope. 
these are latent variables and by convention the factor loadings for i is fixed to one and the factor loadings for the slope is increasing proportionally to the time interval and if you susip and if you suspect that a quadratic curve will describe the growth trajectory better than a linear slope and then you would simply add a quadratic term here let's call it q and the factor loadings will be quadratic instead of linear so you would change it 2 to 4 and then you would change 3 to 9 and then down below we have the regressions we're saying that the the two x variables x1 and x2 they influence both the intercept and the slope and finally, on the bottom here, we're saying that the time varying covariate C, it influences um, our T variable, which is observed technology use, and it changes over time. So we're specifying four times. Finally, we're going to run our model by calling the function growth. If I put my cursor over here, it's going to tell you all the nice things that you can specify in the parenthesis. So the first thing that I specify is that this is my model outlined here and the data set I'm using is called demo growth. I can also put in this parenthesis, for example, I don't want to use maximum likelihood, which is the default, and instead I want to use a different estimator. Or I can tell Levant that my data are missing at random and I don't want you to throw away the participants with missing data. I'm going to go ahead and run these lines and show you what the output looks like. So here we have some information. It tells me that the model converged normally after 31 iterations. We use maximum likelihood. The degrees of freedom is 21. And then here we have our factor loadings that are fixed to 1 and 0, 1, 2, 3 for the slope. We have our regression estimates. And then here we have the covariances. The intercept is usually correlated with the slope because if you think about it, where you start out usually has something to do with how you change over time. And then finally, we want to see the fit measures. So in this line, I'm saying that I only want to see degrees of freedom, chi-square, RMC, SRMR, and the CFI. And all of these are important for structural equation modeling. So I'm going to run, and then it tells me that my de degrees of freedom is again 21. The CFI is really close to 1, and that's a good thing. We want the chi-square to be relatively small, and we want the RMC to be close to 0. So overall here we have a really good model because we, ha we have a fake data set that we're working with. This is the end of my video and please hit the like button and I'll see you next time.